Hey everyone, how you doing out there? Wow, oh, did everybody have a great Christmas? Cool. All righty, let's see who's in here right now. I know I've been packing the hide. So first one in was RG Homestead. Next one coming in was CR from north of the border. And we have uh, Courtney from Northwest Ohio. That's the Wide Family Farm. And followed by, that was Courtney's husband. <laughs> and Michael 58's in here. Everyone's chit-chatting good. Uh, Steve at Corsair Trainers uh, poked his head in. Says he'll be back. He's going to dinner. Built on the rock. <laughs> Steve's got to go eat. Otherwise, he's going to be yelled at. Yeah. <laughs> if she worked all that time fixing the dinner, you got to go eat it. <laughs> happy mama, happy family. Mm -hmm. I do my own cooking. Yeah. I cook for 20 people. Tonight's dinner. I made spaghetti boats, and the kids, the four kids I'm feeding right now, I put hot dogs in their spaghetti. Okay, what's going on here? I got to kill something over here. There we go. All righty. I got, I got multiple computers going on here right now, so. No problem. All right. Oh, thanks, Courtney. Yeah, remind everybody to please hit the uh, thumbs up, the like button. I had a loading strip across the bottom here that was uh, making everybody a little bit smaller, so I had to load it up there. All right, so. Um, Not recently. So let me go ahead and. So we're going to be talking about, you know, heating. Now, we're, like the title says, you know, emergency or not, or as, the, or as the banner here says, emergency or otherwise. So we're talking about emergencies and normal use. And so, oh, Northeast Ohio. All right, sorry, uh, Dustin. Oh, oh, but he's from the part where they talk funny. <laughs> All righty, so looking at heating, this is a convoluted spiderweb subject because it goes off in many directions because there's many ways of heating. Some are better than others, and we're going to try to touch on some of them that work both for normal heating and emergency. We're going to talk about some of the pros and cons here. And uh, oh, Kaylin Strain is in the house. Hey, Kaylin. So let's go on over here and go. Come on, get over here. There we go. All right. So this is one of those statistics, like I said, one thing, statistics can, uh, you know, 47% of people know that anybody can say anything by, by statistics. So this one here is basically put out is saying, um, you know, you have, you know, how people heat their homes. And it's like 49% uh, of people heat it with natural gas. 3% don't bother heating their home. Hey, those lucky guys in Hawaii. And uh, or, or southern Florida when there's no hurricane, uh, you got 5% uh, on propane, 6% uh, are still using fuel oil, 2% uh, are using wood, 1% using other. And like I was talking to Dave and Uncle Al beforehand, oh, Blue Healer just stepped in, is that uh, the house I just bought across the street here um, it is an all electric house. But how he heats the house is with a um, freestanding wood-burning stove he installed. And he said he hasn't had the furnace on, the actual furnace on, in a year or two. He just, you know, and, and when we were over there talking with him for like two hours, I never saw him put anything into that uh, wood-burning stove. Oh, and wow. so it was, you see the flames going, it was loaded, and it just kept going and going and going, and it was hot over there. All right, Courtney says, they do wood and oil, try not to run to oil. Yeah, so the oil if you, is for when you have an emergency and you're, all your wood's wet or whatever. 
Hey, Will at JIT Preparedness Info is in the house. All right, so let's go down to the next one here. And it breaks out a little farther. You can see how the natural gas, the green one here, changes from the region of the country you're in. And you can also notice the fuel oil, kerosene, changes as well. Now, with fuel oil, and I'm going to mention this far later on so you guys can remember it. Fuel oil refers to four, and my fingers right here, four different types of oil. You have your, quote, regular fuel oil, which is basically uh, diesel fuel. You have bunker oil, which is a thick oil. And it's usually what the big um, um, cargo ships and stuff use. And the big, the big old-fashioned, big steam locomotives, the big boy that had, it was a, uh, 4884 uh, locomotive with a big old huge uh, tender on the back. It was, just full of, it was full of bunker oil. And it used steam to heat the bunker oil up so it would uh, pump through because it's a really thick oil. Then you have, uh, uh, what was the other stuff? Uh, I'm just losing it here. Kerosene, of course. And then waste oil. The people that's use our cars and truck stuff. That's yeah, and they and they they process it and they sell the waste oil for um, uh, people that have the, the those uh, type heater units that use the uh, the fuel oil. And you have liquefied petroleum gas and or your or um, your uh, propane tanks sitting out there and stuff and then other. So, but one of the things to consider is that uh, for the most part, homesteaders and preppers, electricity is not their ideal first choice for their heating solution. And so, and I pulled up this little this little one here, and this was under, um, type, I just Googled types of heating systems for homes. And this was uh, on here, it talks about forced air systems, Gives a pro, a con, energy saving tip, and compatible heat source systems. And forced air, and it hits down below here, it says furnace, heat pumps, active solar heating as compat compatible sources. So, a way of supplementing it. So, you know, or working with your system. And we're going to talk about this later on on this here. But then you have your steam radiant heating, or, or actually, you got your steam. And you have actually have your hot water systems as well that work through it. You have your radiant heating, which is your in-floor stuff. And it's kind of hard to see, but there's little squiggly lines on the floor where they install the tubing and it radiates heat up through the floor. Then you have your uh, hot water baseboards or also your, they also have steam baseboards as well. That's why radiant steam and, ba and hot water are kind of interchangeable. Then you have your electric baseboard systems. And so, so we're going to start with electricity a little bit since it's the least favorite. So we're going to get that out of the way. Uh, Uncle Al, what what's your uh, what is your house heated with? Let's see, natural gas because I'm down the street from the natural gas plant, so it's only a quarter mile away. If it blows up, I'm not here. <laughs> All right, Dave, what are you? What's your uh, apartment heated with? baseboard electric baseboard electric and with a lot of people trying to go with solar power and everything that's one of the things you got to bring into consideration is what is the wattage load of your electric heater <coughs> and uh some people that are either like an electric furnace like across the street or <coughs> wrong button need to mute it <laughs> there we go um, the, the, um, the furnace for the you know, house across the street that I bought is an electric furnace, but we'll probably never use the electric furnace per se, cause that tries to heat the whole thing up. So what, um, we'll probably do is, you know, space heaters. Of course, we will not go with this old style here. Down here. They got a whole bunch of new, more energy efficient ones for heating. Um, there's um, electric oil, basically heats up the oil and it just kind of radiates out. And you got all, all your different types of quartz heaters and stuff like that. 
I, uh, we actually have one of these, and I got it out in the shop right now. The one I have out there, it, it, for the temperature setting, it goes anywhere from 65 to 80 degrees. If I try to go below 65, it drops all the way to 40. And that's just for a, ooh, we're just going to keep it above freezing temperature. So that's what I use it out there in the shop right now for until I get the gas uh, heater out, the gas line run out there and get a heater installed out there to keep the batteries, the paint, and all the uh, liquids I have in the shop from freezing. Uh, all right. So I'm trying to catch you on the side here. I had spaghetti, hey. uh, Dustin. Previous place was natural gas. Face heater back up. Okay. And Courtney said they had one in her old job. Oh, it's basically one of these electrics. Took forever to heat a room. Yeah, that's the thing. Is it does take forever to heat a room with one of these, but it does take the chill off, especially like um, my wife has a little, one of those little itty-bitty ones similar to this thing here. This is a 250-watt heater, and she has one down by her feet under her desk to uh, – because they have the – you know, when the uh, – for the last uh, 10 months or so, uh, everyone that her work's been working from home will only come in occasionally. So the building doesn't keep the furnace running all the time to heat, heat all the offices. Um, there's some, they have some really cool ones out here that work off of different types, different types of uh, heating element systems. Uh, this is an, an electric oil filled wall unit that's installed and you know it's got thermostat controls on it and stuff but there's you know it's a wall unit that just you know it's a mod one of the more modern ones all right this is uh, i think something really cool and this is something that my wife and i really want to install here later on when we get all the solar panels up to offset the cost one of these is the ac unit the other one is a heat exchanger which is basically an AC unit backwards. So instead of taking the uh, heat out of the air in the house and blowing and discharging the heat through these out here, it does the other way around. It takes uh, the heat from the outside air and releases it inside. And so, um, it, it, yeah, it's, a, it's an all electric system. But if you have, uh, if you're like um, Scott at Hidden Hidden Valley Homestead up there, up in North Idaho here where he has a stream that flows year round. He's going to be installing a, um, a water turbine on it to generate power for his, you know, on it. He has solar panels already, but you know, this is the type of system that he could go once he has electricity free from the uh, stream. Now, what are the, now we're getting away from electricity. We're going to get into other sorts. Mr. Heater, the little buddy. Little propane heater. Now, I got one sitting right there, and I'm doing a. Uh, I got. I'm working on editing a video on it and how it works and everything. So that'll be coming out here shortly. But this, you know, on the box it says "indoor safe," except in California. Right. Uh, let me uh, mention that mm -hmm. they had a problem with the hose that ran from Mister Buddy to a five-gallon container. Gil, you remember that fire in uh, Vallejo? Is it Vallejo? Vallejo, yes. Yeah, it burned the house down quicker than lightning because the hose deteriorated over the summer. They did not properly store it. They rehooked it up, and guess what? A catalytic converter on Mister Buddy did with leaky gas hose ignited it in the air. Yeah, and guess what okay. happened to the house? Yeah, the, the, what basically happened, it ignited it, went burnt back to the hose. So the, the pinhole leak on the hose, the crack started burning there and just melted the hose. So it just, and just dumped, every, you know, flame. Every, yeah, it was ugly. But um, the other thing is California has these, you, people can call them either stupid or forward-thinking laws concerning um, ven ventilation for heaters. Because some people are stupid enough to use, they were using um, charcoal um, hibachi type heat uh, things and cooking indoors, which was giving off a lot of uh, carbon monoxide and stuff and killing everybody in the house. 
Yeah. Well, so any, any type of indoor heat or stuff has to, everything has to be vented. Right. Um, we had two deaths over Christmas in my area because they're immigrant families and they got cold. What they did, they got a hibachi, put in five pounds of charcoal in it, and that was the last Christmas they had. Yeah, the pro oh, Jet 101's in the house. Yes. Hey, and Jet. David, too. Mule Train. Oh, David Mule Train. All right, didn't see your uh, name go by there, David. Hey, how's it going? See, one of the problems was is that um, back when they first started having um, the, quote, uh, in, uh, the ventless heaters, they didn't have good catalytic converter. It was new and everything, and that caused problems. And, of course, you know, so, uh, California, oh, we can't have that. Boom, law against it. Of right. course, now, now the technology has evolved with the, the ceramic tiles and the catalytic tiles and stuff that basically all it puts off is uh, water vapor. Yeah. And the newer uh, Mr. Buddies all have even the big, uh, did you see the new construction one Alaskan Prepper put out? It's newer than this. Yeah. Uh, it has a carbon monoxide detector. Mm -hmm. If it uh, goes over to a certain point, Mr. Buddy, all of them will shut off. Yeah. And actually, um, Reed at Manifestations of Imagination uh, did a, a review of one I'm going to show here in a second here. And yeah, he talks about it has an oxygen sensor. If the oxygen level drops too much, shuts off. And so this is a, a Mr. Heater that has two of the small tanks on it. And here's the uh, the buddy, and they have the, uh, what do you put the tank on? They run the hose up in there, attach the hose to it, so you can run it off a of five gallon. If you're doing anything like this, you got to make sure this hose is in good condition. Or you get the other one that they have on sale, which is better than the Mr. Buddy hose. Because Mr. Buddy's hose, guess where? It's manufactured. Yeah. And so like, uh, the one the hose I have is one uh, made by, uh, by Coleman. And so, but yeah, you can get these. And that way, you it lasts a little longer. And they got multiple settings. And so these things here... You know, I got a, I got a video I'm going to be putting out on the one I did back there uh, coming out here in the next week. Now, they also have some really fancy, nice ones that you can roll around from room to room. And it. Um, I'm not sure how many of the uh, the one-pound bottles they screw in this or whether they have that smaller one, small like uh, one uh, or three-gallon uh, one in it. But they have a bunch of there are, are options to use on these. Now, these blue flame ones can run on either, can't hardly see it, but it has the propane and natural gas symbol. So you can do it either way. And this one here can be the setup on, on um, legs here, or it can be wall mounted. These are ventless. And it says on it down here, or it says universal and some kit. Now, where is it here? Uh, uh, Oxygen depletion sensor with automatic shutoff feature. Uh, reading on here, where's it come on? Where's the no California one on it? Uh, they probably got it on the back since they don't put it on the front. But yeah, these these ones here, you know, they still because it's ventless. California goes, oh no, no, it's terrible. Also, they upgraded them. They also have carbon monoxide shutoff yeah. switches on those. Yeah. Um, all right. So, but these. See, they mount right in the wall. And Reed did this one here, or one sim model similar to this one on his, for his house that he uses. So, um, yeah, check, go ahead and check uh, Manifestations of Imagination. Look back for the one. He did it back in April, I'm thinking. That's when he did the video on it. Now, beside, now, something else you can use is space heaters is kerosene. They've been using kerosene since, oh, I would say before the country was a country here. Right. And also they use uh, this type of, you see all these models originally made in Japan by the sun company because yeah. the square models were every household in Japan because they didn't have centralized heating. Unfortunately, we had a lot of fires during earthquake season because yeah. it's a lamp. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Courtney, the thing is on these, she says kerosene smells. Yeah, however, the way these are set up with the burn chambers on them, and I'll show a bigger model here later on, 
my cousins, that's how they, in California, that's how they heated their two-story house was with um, one of these. And actually it was one of the, uh, this one here, right here that had, oh, let me go right over here. The second one, bottom row, second one from the left. And I'll show you a bigger one of that as well. Cause I actually have two of those models. Yeah. They're dairy farm use. Yeah. See it. All right. Yeah. So this one here on the right is uh, the, what, what I have and it's got, it's got its combustion chamber stuff. And when it's burning, right, you can't smell any kerosene off of it. Cause it does a complete burn. Now this here, this old Puritan here is an old kerosene uh, burner. Now this one would smell a little bit, but if you look at it, this is a ventless one as well, but it's set up here so you can actually heat a tea, uh, kettle on there and keep, have hot water, which is always good to have in any, any situation. And this is the other type I have here. And this is the uh, metal and ceramic burn chamber here. And it actually has an emergency uh, tip over shut off. It's really cool. Uh, so yeah, these are some of the other ones here. Now these here are smaller up above here. These are like little room ones for individual rooms. And this one on the far right here is actually set up so you can cook on it as well. Dave, Dave. I think you need to get this one. <laughs> Which one? The one upper right one that you can actually cook on. Yeah, it, it's a real nice one. I don't remember what company that's making it now, but in Japan, that's a very popular model in the old days. It didn't burn down houses or apartments. Everybody used it, and you always see in bad Japanese movie. They're cooking tea, and that's the model they use, and they're just yeah. sitting there at the table pouring hot tea. All right, we got Martha, old school prepper in the house, and Drops Family Garden has joined us. Those things <sighs> It costs money, yeah. Everybody get Dave one of those things up there. <laughs> I don't need everybody to do it. Come on. That, that would everybody, you know, he needs everybody get the pool, pool, get together, and we'll get you one. Oh, well, in that case. Yeah. All right. So, um, okay. Uh, RG says here, oh, where's it go? let me get up here. RG says, insurance companies don't like heresy in a house on the western half of the United States. Yeah, mainly because of California and earthquakes in California. Right, because they learned from Japan. Yeah. All right. Now, uh, oh, one of the things before I go on, uh, point out this: uh, one of the problems is that um, with these ventless heaters and the kerosene heaters and stuff, while why um, a lot of municipalities are going, oh no, 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 and insurance companies. Because house, uh, housing quality of building it has gotten better, so there's nice, not so many leaks, not so much air cup flow coming through. The and like the house I grew up in, uh, you could always around the windows you could feel air coming in here, a little air coming in here. We had plenty of ventilation. <laughs> we had plenty of fresh air. Right, but uh, with modern construction, that's airtight almost. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. With all the new, uh, that's um, the Tyvek house wrap and the vapor barriers, everything they do. And now, the, even on some of the new ones now, they're going around and they're foam filling, foam filling around all the electrical outlets and plugs and stuff like that. <laughs> down there. No, it was it wasn't a barn. It was actually the house. Oh, the house I, I I grew up in my in my younger years was one of the houses that survived the Port Chicago explosion. And they moved it onto the property here. And they actually moved two houses onto the property and built an adjoining room to uh, make it a, a bigger house. Oh, and also, folks, in California, you could still use uh, kerosene heaters like Jill says, but it's got to be an outdoor well-ventilated barn because I have two of them at my nephew's dairies. Because it gets cold at 4 o'clock in the morning when it's 37 outside. And the yeah. cows, you know, they huddle near the heater. It's warm. Let's go down to All right. So now we're going to move on to wood. And, of course, there is the old-fashioned fireplace. And we talked a little bit about fireplaces um, uh, earlier in the month, about fireplace safety, screens, and all the other fun stuff about it. So we're not going to go into that here. But... Um, Wood stoves. I mean, 
I could do a whole three hour live stream on wood stoves, the different types of different models. Some of them are really cool and stuff. But I just threw up this little simple one here. You got your firebox on the left. You got a little oven on the right with your temperature gauge on it. Um, and you got your uh, uh, nice, nicely covered uh, uh, top plates there to put pots and uh, uh, skittles on. So, and here's one that is just basically all it is, is basically a fireplace in a metal box. And don't forget pellet stoves, guys. And pellet stoves, there's different types of pellet stoves. So those that take these wooden pellets and there's actually take corn, not corn on the cob, individual corn grains. And there's the same thing with the, uh, as a pellet stove does. Oh, so you can use the cob and the husk. No, no, no husk, no cob, just the kernel. Hmm. You know, just, you know, I could, you know, buy to feed your hogs or whatever. All right. So right now we really haven't talked about anything that works on this. And we're going to talk some about some that actually work with existing systems, which I think is really cool that they have some new stuff that all that piggybacks onto the old school stuff here. Uh, White family had a question. Are pellet stoves more dirty? Um, actually, no. Believe it or not, because uh, uh, the pellet stoves, because the way they're setting up right now, are set up, it um, it controls the amount of uh, fuel coming into it, and they burn a lot cleaner. Uh, a friend of ours that I've I've known since I was twelve years old. Um, he had, they had a pellet stove up at their place and he probably used that pellet stove for like 30 years, at least that I know of. And whenever he got his chimney clean, the guy says, your, 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 your flu pipe here is clean already. It did, wasn't putting out a bunch of stuff. Okay. We got gray one Oh sevens in the house. Right. Uh, WD Glock and roll. And Martha says she's using her wood burning stove right now. And I think WD because the neighbors, they're probably burning wood. Yeah. All right. So we're going to talk about how some of the forced airs or the radiant steam or hot water ones can be used with what we're going to go into now. I have been looking at these um, outdoor uh, hot water boilers since before I got married. That's been 33 years. All right, guys. So, um, there's a place just down the road for me that actually makes those. Yeah. These are uh, most of these that you can get out there are American made. And uh, they come in different sizes. And you see the different size doors on them. And it also has a different size um, firebox and water jacket exchange unit in there. But then these guys also make one for pallets. Yes, pallets, you, not dead bodies. Yeah, pallets. You know, you'll, you you get the pallets from the concrete come on, or the, you see people you know, getting rid of pallets and stuff. Hey, especially if it's an old oak pallet, hey, it's great in there. Okay, Mrs. Mill, who just came on, uh, I think they had one, but it, they, she says it's about 20K. Um, okay, I'm looking here. Uh, okay, but they're about 20,000. Yeah, some of the price ranges, you know, go anywhere from like, oh, well, of course, now the price has jumped up, but it used to be uh, the, the cheap small one. We'll back up here. The small one, the classic, the 4030 down here, the small one. Uh, it was about uh, $7,500 about 10 years ago when I was looking at it. Okay. And also, folks, you need a power source for this one. Okay, the Model 80. And she was looking at which one was she looking at? Everything's going, everything's flying by here right now. Yeah, I lost track. Sorry about that, Gil. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Blaze King. Yeah. All right. So yeah, there's you know, like I said, there's Blaze King. There is um, Central Boiler, which is what these are here. Um, yeah, they they they, uh, they do have uh, water pumps in them to pump the hot water. We'll show you how that works. They, uh, some of them have blowers on them. Uh, they have regul they all regulated. So you got to have some sort of power to it. Not much. You know, it fits on a 15-amp circuit. So, and this is a kind of a drawing illustration of how it works. 
It has a, a cold blower to blow outside air into it. It's a firebox. Heats up. Now it's surrounded on all sides uh, by water. So it heats the water up and it vents out that way there. And the water outlet down here at the back down here, hot water through the building, cold water return. Let me go over here and a little exploded view of one that works. And the way the water, the, the, uh, so they're getting them now where they reverse flow the exhaust through the, instead of coming off the wood and exhausting out, they blow it back down through into a, uh, a secondary combustion chamber. And that way they get a lot more efficiency out of them. Right. All right. Next. Okay. Now they have some of these now that actually use wood pellets or corn kernels to heat them. So, you know, that's, you know, if, if, you're, if you're out there in the Midwest where they got a lot of corn and stuff and you get it cheap, it's probably cheaper than the uh, uh, the, uh, the wood pellets. But this is how somebody's working. This is another comp comp company, Hypertherm. So they have the lines that come into the house. Now, some run into your house hot water heater, and it's a double system type uh, that they use on it where it's a, a, heating, a heating jacket from the hot water into it, so it heats up the water from that. And the water also goes over to a unit that goes into your existing furnace unit. Anthony, so you, stop by. What was that? Anthony's here. Hey, Anthony. And so, like something like this, if you have it hooked up to hooked up the unit up to your existing furnace system, instead of using your gas or your electric or you know propane, you use the wood burner to uh, provide the hot water. And then the air blows through it, just like a uh, the, heat, the heater in your car. Yeah, you know, heats up the car, you know, type thing. When it's a little bit, it's a bigger unit. There's a heat exchanger there, so it heats up your house on it. And Kalen, depending on the age of the building you're in, uh, and the area of the country, I know where you're at. But most older buildings, if it's like 45, 50 years old, will be a boiler heater. Um, yeah. The newer ones use a different style of boiler per se, but it's still based on the same principle. Yeah. And what's interesting, I got some, some drawings here coming up here on how they interlink them. So um, this is another one showing it going down into the system down below. And they bury the lines coming into the house. Now, usually they'll do is they'll take the lines coming in are put into an insulated uh, four inch um, flexible like drain pipe that has insulation in it with the tubing in it. So you don't have heat loss. No and thanks, Steve's Steve. back. Ain't hey, no Steve. Uh, Steve, what happened on uh, uh, yesterday when you got that hail and you said the temperature dropped and you were getting cold? Hey, I live in Southern California. We've had our water pipes freeze down there once every five, 10 years, but it does happen. If I, were, if I were to go to California for any reason, it would be to visit somebody out there. And she lives in northern part of California, where it does get kind of cold. Yeah. She doesn't live far from Napa Valley. Uh, well, hey, Steve's son lives up there by Na by Santa Rosa, Napa area. All right. So the next, okay. So now the old gas oil uh, boiler units, they have uh, systems that hook up that run into those and run through the tank on the boiler and then run through the boiler system to heat up either wa the hot water boards or the steam heaters or whatever to heat up the house using the same system that's already in place if you have a gas or oil boiler water heater unit for the house for the heating system and they can just tie right into it and run the system that way now for anyone's wondering so your your burners on your uh your uh, boilers, basically it's a, a burner unit with a big, uh, like a steam engine, like a train type thing. You got all your tubes and stuff and it heats it up and it puts out the hot water or steam, depending on what the system is, runs it through your baseboard or your other type heaters and you have your return system on it. How, okay, wait, all right, we're gonna back up here. Okay, Courtney asked, how hard is it to install all that if you don't have all that? Well, probably if you're, go if you're going to be getting one of these systems, let me back up here. I would say 
you want to get if you're going to get this and if you don't if you have any sort of central heating or central air system you can just this for them to install this little uh, unit in there in the in the ducting is really easy and um they can set it up to with different styles for heating the hot water and not or not heating the hot water just heating the house there's different ways they can do it um a system where you're tying into a, a existing um system already for ducting which most houses have some sort of it it's fairly easy if you don't have one like my grandmother's old house it had a it had two wall heaters vented wall heaters built into the wall and just heated from that portion of it and we had some fans around just to blow the heat around around the house um, if you're going to have to install a whole system, uh, event, ducts and ventilation system, that's, you know, I don't know how much, but that's, you know, that, that's where it runs into like you're installing a regular furnace anyways. Okay. Yeah, it can, it can be tough, but a contractor can do it. Yep. Especially, especially a good, uh, HVAC contractor, uh, cause, uh, these are becoming more and more prevalent. And so there's training out there that a lot of them are getting so they can do this sort of stuff. Now let's get back down here to, all right. So on your, uh, your boilers, you know, my sister had one, you know, we talked about how they get natural gas, oil, biodiesel, bunk oil, waste oil. There are wood ones that are actually, you go down, you stoke the wood furnace to heat the boiler. And there's also coal. My sister had a house in Salt Lake that um, had an old, coal furnace on it to uh, heat the water and Wayne that, stopped by he's listening as driving hey Wayne how's it going all right now getting away from this getting to more passive systems and passive systems are really cool or really warm they work both ways uh, you can get, it goes down it uses uh, geothermal or it uses you know there's also um Oh, shoot, just lost the word. Guys, I'm sorry. We'll show, oh, we'll find it here in a second. So as you can see, it runs through, picks up either, either heats or cools the liquid or air going down into the ground and runs it through uh, ex exchange units in the house here where it can actually heat your hot water and heat the air going into the house. Was the word thermal you dynamic? Know, homestead with Jess. Hey, how's it going? Everybody, give Keto Homestead with Hi, Jeff, Keto. a good, a good uh, warm welcome here. Uh, Gil, uh, they say geothermal. Was that the word we were looking for? No, there's another word I'm looking for, and uh, it, it's coming up here on one of the slides, so I'll get to it. I'll point it out. But yeah, so this is geothermal. And I got a bunch of different little slides here on this here, and this shows it a little bit better. So you basically you get your um, when you're trying to heat the house. It pumps, you know, the cooler uh, liquid out or air out and brings hot back in. And it can be uh, done either just by, you know, if you have like large pipe, you can just use air like that. Um, one video for the Kansas retired postal worker in Kansas that heats this huge um, Wallapini greenhouse off of, off of geothermal air, no liquid. Right. And Martha said thermodynamic. Close. We're getting there. It's on the tip of my tongue. I still can't remember, but it is, I know it's on one of the slides here coming up here. Now, there's different ways of doing the geothermal. You can do it, you know, vertical ground, where you go down deep and bring it up. You can do uh, with a loop system, which is uh, similar to the horizontal ground collector. And if you happen to have water nearby, a big pond or whatever, they also have them where they put the loop systems down in the bottom of the pond and pull the, uh, the heat or cool off the pond. Hey, Ryan. Ryan the Gamer. Hey, hey. All right. Ambient energy. That's it. <laughs> Ambient energy. And well, what's that's interesting, way this, around. Is, this is not as new as you might think. And I'll explain it. This gets really interesting because some of the big cities back east, New York in particular, have an ambient air system that they've been using for over a hundred years. Right. And Anthony mentions Romans had heated floors 
Uh, I can't see it. Where'd it go? Oh, wrong one. Uh, jumped here on me. There we go. Yeah, 20, uh, 2,500 years ago. Yeah. And they also had heated floor bathtubs, too. Oh, yeah. Geothermal. Okay, D uh, Dave, what's that link for? That is a video. To, uh, that is a link to one of my videos. Uh, okay, and that's on your your heater thing, right? That's the uh, army tent stove. All right, so I'm going to throw a link in here that Dave gave me on the private chat. Go back here to comments. So this is one of Dave's videos down at the bottom here. Check out it's his uh, uh, army tent stove video. Which is really, uh, it's a neat, neat little uh, stove. All right, so ambient yeah, heating. Bucks. How much? Less than 50 bucks. Shit. Oh, cool. Hey, Christy Betts in the house. Hey, Christy. All right, so with the, this shows different ways of ambient uh, energy, you know, heat from the air, uh, sort of like the, you, know, you just use the outside air and run it through a system where it heats and cools. Uses the air coming in, and either they extract heat from it, or they expel heat to it to carry the heat out when you want to cool in the in the uh, summertime. All right, um, you can you know the uh, surface and deep one is just like you instead of pumping water down or a, uh, a coolant liquid to get the heat or coolness back up, you just you pump air around. Now here it says heat from local power grid. In New York, they actually have heat vents that apartment buildings are tied into, and the city uses uh, a steam heater type system, and they heat up all the hot, this hot air, and the apartment buildings pull the air off the system. And so this is you know this is like heat from heat from a local power grid. This is a big system that people tie into. It's not really viable too much for the uh, homesteader or prepper to use. But the others are systems that you can use that are out there to this, do this sort of thing. All right. Now, back in the 70s, this type of system was put out there, this layout here, and it got hammered because of a very obvious flaw, and I'm going to point that out. So if you have hot air, if you're trying to heat the house, you got the cold air coming out here. It's cooling on these lines here. Well, the line is hot, uh, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. Guess what it's going to do? Cancel itself out. Exactly. And so when they have them running uh, alternating like this, no, you don't want this type of a system. You want to have this type of a system down here. And we go this, here where it, there it's goes from one side to the other. So as the heat changes. It's not canceling itself out. Let's go back down to this. Yeah, so this is where they all alternate hot, cold, hot. That cancels itself out. Um, now, part of this is what I wanted to show. This is the only one I found. You got well one, well two. Actually, it's supposed to be well two on this other side. What it does, what you do is you pump, you just use, use groundwater. And you pump water out of one. And then you have your heat exchange unit, which either, either uh, if it's in the wintertime, it takes the warmth from that water, condenses or, uh, condenses the heat, the heat and stuff, and heats the house, and puts super cold water back in on the other well. In the summertime, it reverses the, uh, the heat exchange unit, so it, it um, heats the water up from the air in the house and produces cool, cold air and then pumps the hot water back down into the ground. And so this is, uh, if you have a, like an acre or even a half acre, you can do this on. You just have the wells on the far, far sides of the property away from each other. So you just use the groundwater if the groundwater is shallow. Not like, um, uh, I think Reed says this is 275 feet down. So, Yeah. Uh, there are there are different ways of doing the, doing the geothermal collection. You know, you have to see what works for you in your area if you're thinking about going geothermal. But geothermal is a renewable energy source, and if you have some solar panels, the the, the system on it that powers it that circulates it is not a high wattage use system. So that's what's really cool about that. And 
They're really cool. Yeah, I know pun. No, that wasn't meant to be a pun. <laughs> but it's a, it's a really neat system. Low wattage. You can actually ha have it powered by solar panels. And then it's a, it is then a totally self-sustaining off-the-grid system. Now, with these systems, this is another system which was big in California where they have the uh, these uh, uh, collectors. They're solar liquid collectors. So basically, it heats up the liquid in there. It comes in, runs through heat exchange units, heats up a big water uh, storage tank. It circulates through the radiant floor heating. It can also heat up your hot water tank. Um, it does some really neat stuff. A lot of a lot of my neighbors back in Martinez were using this not to heat the house, but to heat their pool, the swimming pool. So here it is in December. They're there's steam coming off their pool, and they're all out there in their pool from the sun heating their pool. And what everybody's talking on the artificial sun that so yeah. Korea did, <laughs> they ran out of helium three. For 20 seconds, it burst into fusion, yeah. and then they ran out of fuel. Steve, you are not a hole. You're just a good old Marine who tells it like it is, cut to the chase, no BS. You just go in there straight on. And that's why I like your channel so much. It's the only way to be, ain't it? Yep. If they don't like it, they can turn around and walk the other direction. Yeah, if they do like it, they're going to find out all sorts of really good stuff. Get a roller teller, Steve. <laughs> a little right. sugar here. Okay. Now, what's interesting about some of these water circulation systems, if you look here, what they've upgraded this uh, steam hot water one here, if you look on the bottom left here, they put a thermostat, a mechanical thermostat on it for the room. And they also have a shutoff on it. So if, they, if they're not using that room, they can shut it off and not use it at all. This only opens up when that particular room gets cold or hot, depending whether they're using this for hot water or cold water. I've seen where they actually ran cold water through these to help cool the, a room down. But uh, for the for heating, you have your thermostat, and if it's not, if it gets room gets cold, it opens up mechanically, no electricity involved, and allows the uh, steam or hot water to go through. That's one of the new. Uh, technological advancements to an old school system. Okay, um, and I just got a quick drawing here I found of how they run them from the big boilers. They run the hot water right. steam up through the different systems, run the return lines, and just run everything around to provide stuff. And it, basically you got your, your supply going out and then the supply goes into the return line. That way they keep, keep the water hot all the time. Everything's going all the time. And I think so. All right. So this is the last slide, guys. Um, so you can take your existing type systems, your forced air, your radiant steam. If you're lucky enough to have a radiant uh, floor system in already, hot water baseboards, you can, oh, these four systems here, you can update it with by modernizing the heat source of them through either the wood burning or the waste oil heaters there is actually i saw an outdoor boiler one like the um the ones we were showing there that uses waste oil for an outdoor um water boiling uh, uh, boiler you know system and this you know and just feeds the hot water into the house so Okay, I got through everything I want to do. Guys, anything else that you know that I missed? Anything else? Oh, okay, Kraken did it. Hey, Kraken. Kraken fired off. Okay, we all need to get our own nuclear steam plant. No. <laughs> okay. Um, Dave, you have anything to say? Nope. Okay. Uh, to answer Kaylin's question, because she's apartment living, uh, you could get, uh, I seen hashtag alive the korean bloody zombie movie they had the little butane tanks with a heater on top that you could use to heat up a small room and you use that and you'll be pretty well off if you did like the heroine of the movie make a little blanket for, for it make sure you got one opening 
and turn on a little butane heater and she kept fairly warm the kid across the hallway is like freezing and zombies outside sorry about that yeah <clears throat> yeah so um oh one of the points safety point nothing to do with the heating system just to do with general winter in general even though it's cooler everyone remember you can still dehydrate in the winter time so get your water either uh clear water like like i do or uh muddy water like uh dave does i have no idea what you're talking about <laughs> i drink tea yeah so uh Oh, yes, 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 Caitlin, yes, thank you. Little he heaters and lanterns that run on the isobutane cans. Yes. Right. They have a, a heater unit for those. Yeah. It's, um, I don't have it here. I totally forgot about it. I have those, one of those little stoves that has the can. It looks like an aerosol spray can, but it's an isobutane can. It goes in it and for the uh, heating the little stove to cook on. Mm -hmm. they also, and they also have the, the backpacking stoves, like the one I sent Uncle Al. Um, for the backpacking stove, where it's a um, the jet boil is the most famous na uh, brand name for right. them, and you screw it on there. But they also have, yeah, they have the little heaters for those. And I actually, did. I saw a heater for one of those that actually has the cat has a ceramic catalytic converter unit in it to uh, eliminate uh, the carbon monoxide. I can't remember it. It's on Amazon, uh, Gil. It could be the older model because the newer model with the ceramics pushing out the older model. So you get for about $23.99 yeah. on Amazon, the older one. All right. So give me one second here. Oh, there's Mr. Buddy. Here's my uh, Mr. Buddy. And I'm going to be coming out with the... Um, the video on my unboxing and uh, setting up video here this week later. I just got to do the editing on it. Hey, did I just see? Yeah, Butch at Sand Hollow Homestead is here. Yep. Woo so, um, guys, gals, and whatever you uh, identify as. I'm going to make a quick comment on your Mr. Buddy. Okay. You're know, thinking about getting one. When I lived up in Michigan, I lived in a chimney laying on its side. In other words, a trailer. Um, and it was an old one. All the insulation insulation had pretty much fallen through all the way to the base. So, I mean, in the wintertime, you froze your hoo-hoo off. That Mr. Buddy sat in the living room, six feet away from where I slept, kept me nice and toasty. So, they do work quite well, even in a chimney laying on its side. Just be very careful about what you're doing with it, and you'll be just fine. Yeah. Uh, this winter, there is, you know, there are rumors flying around. How how true the rumors are, I don't know. But they're talking about um, uh, fuel shortages for natural gas and uh, fuel oil. They're always talking fuel oil shortages and delivery problems if they get bad uh Sure snowstorms and stuff um if now's the time to stock up with uh uh, pr uh some propane uh can uh canisters and the five gallon ones there is let me see if i can bring this up here real quick bring this over here um for uh the tdd there's my off grid does that have it there no it doesn't okay um for the five-gallon cans, they have kits or the 20-pound, 20, 20 if you want to call it the 20-pound uh, bottles, you know. Your, right. Your, your barbecue grill ones, your standard barbecue grill things. Um, the – where is it here? Do I got it here? No, nope, that's the propane. That's the, uh, the white gas converter. Yeah. So uh, what it's talking about over here. Uh, is the dairy uh, burner type thing. You screw it on top and you use yeah. it in dairies to heat the cows so they don't kick you in the face because it's cold and you shove tubes up you know where and they're not very happy. So we yeah. got those at the dairy and I got plenty of them. So if my gas is gone, I got two and I'll heat my house up. So Yeah, I'm lo looking for the... Uh... The adapter? 
No, what it was is it's, it, there's a stand you can get on Amazon. Basically, right. you turn your five gallon or twenty pound bottle upside down, and has a little it has a little stand for it to hold it that way. It has the attachment comes off of it, so you can screw these one pound bottles onto it and refill them. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, you get so if you get have a couple of the big ones. Rather than uh, lugging a big five gallon, uh, I mean, uh, five gallon, 20 pound bottle through that house, you can just refill those small ones and those will go a couple days before you got to pull it off and put the next one on, unless you're using it all the time. Yeah, there. The refill kit for it. Uh, let's see. Let's try this. Let me just, uh, propane refill kit. Let's see what that brings up. Okay, here we go. And bring this up. Yeah, so you've got, you know, the refill kit has a little valve on it, comes with everything here on it. Uh, let me get over here. Now, you can buy refillable bottles, you know, for it as well that are actually designed for refilling. Right. But you can also get, you know, there's, it comes with all the stuff you got here on it, the easy fill adapters and all the stuff for it. But there's also, you can get um, the the special uh, thing to just a hose to redo it, for ref refilling stuff. And there is a, where is it here? The little one, little jobber I have. There we go. Yeah, I have, I have one of these little jobbers here that you just screw, you screws on and you just. Uh, Hook onto your propane. There we go. Hook onto your pro. Come on, stay. There it goes. Hook onto your propane bottles and refill them. Right now, folks, you're gonna use the new ones. Do not use the old ones, because they switch from the rubber gasket to the silicon because it's a better seal. The rubber one will age and crack. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that's one of the things you can do to. Um, Sorry, I'm just looking, looking at some comments. Make sure I keep up on the comments there. Oh, I don't own the dairy or the farm or the ranch. My yeah. nephew does. I'm just yeah. the poor uncle. They said, oh, we have you sign all the papers. Yeah, if I die, you're all screwed. <laughs> yeah, he's leaving it all to me. <laughs> no, I'm not leaving it all. I'm taking it with me. <laughs> you're going to be in limbo for 10 years. So, uh, everyone... Um, yeah, we're at, we're at hitting the hour mark here. So, uh, yeah, take, take care of this winter. Make sure you have a backup heat source. And yeah, up to your backup. Yeah, back up to your backup. Remember, uh, one is none, two is one. Mm -hmm. And uh, this summer, seriously, think of, right now, start planning now so that this summer, when it's warmer or the spring, uh, think about possibly upgrading your heating system to one that is more of a sustainable. Su yeah, that's that's the word. Sustainable. Off grid sustainable. Off, off grid sustainable, cheaper system to keep you warm. And before we head out, um, or if Friday. You live up in the Great White North, um, just learn how to build an igloo. Yeah. <laughs> and, and how to hunt polar bear and whales to get the whale fat. Or move to Steve's house. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Steve, you got people moving down to Southern California now. Uh, Friday. Friday night is going to be a hodgepodge live stream. We're going to talk about several things. Uh, we're going to be talking about the uh, quadrants uh, meteor shower. So, uh, which, which uh, peaks uh, from the night of the 3rd to the morning of the 4th. And we're going to be... Kalen. What was that? I said, I'll told Kalen, I'll believe it when I see it. Yeah. And uh, we're all, then we're also going to be talking about other things to help keep you a little bit sane, all the new stuff, new uh, type card games and board games that came out this winter. I mean, this summer. There are there are some doozies uh, dealing with the Red Dragon. Hey, <laughs> There's some card yeah, games. If you're going to buy a board game, go visit Doc Bones and Nurse Amy. Exactly. Yeah, uh, I and twice and then donated it to a military gentleman overseas. 
I sent it yeah. to a military base so the boys over there could have something fun. Boom. And bring it up here real close. Uh, boom and bloom. Dot net. Come on, let's go. Where is it? Uh, store. Trying to bring it up here, folks, real quick. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Where is going to be the game is at? This is Doom and Bloom.net, uh, Doc Bones, Nurse Amy. Both uh, Dave and I have had them on our live streams uh, earlier this year. Uh, I don't see the game. Huh? So they have been very, very busy. Yes, they have been very. I mean, they just had another video come out uh, today. I watched it, which was really interesting on uh, dealing with the Red Dragon. And something else that's already been approved for Houston to find out, whoa, this works better than anything else. But uh, back in the beginning of the year, ain't it? Yeah, well, this is something even that you weren't talking about then. This was a, um, I can't remember what it is, but yeah. Anyways, I don't see where the game is on here. Survival here? Right now, so. Huh? I don't have my glasses, so um, you'll have to. Yes, survival gear. Oh, I don't believe it there. Oh, um, uh, anyways, they have a they have their board game. Sorry, this B O A board game. Let's see if that brings it up. There it is. Yeah, uh, 3D miniature set of uh, of A for survival. That's just the miniatures. I guess the miniatures for it. Uh, yeah. We'll anyway, yeah, hunt around there. It's a great. It's a it's a great game. Main thing is that uh, we are just actually starting winter, and so people are going to get cabin fever. Make sure you have something to keep yourself sane, and we're going to talk about a little bit about uh, things you can do to keep yourself sane, and I'll talk a little bit about the meteor shower on Friday. So uh, we got some other good things coming up. Uh, uh, we, uh, coming up here in January, we have uh, clothing myths and facts. We're going to revisit that with some more information on it. Talk about EMP, uh, talk about food storage in depth, about proper way of doing food storage rotations coming up here in January. Um, Going to talk about the uh, Red Dragon, a.k.a. the Wuhan Bug. Uh, knives, uh, natural disasters, cooking with no power. Got a bunch of interesting stuff coming up here in, in January and into February. And, guys, if you have a topic you want us to discuss, down in the bottom of the description is the email for Camp Penton Family Compound. Send me your suggestion, and um, I will add it to the list of stuff we're going to talk about. <laughs> Throws log in fireplace. <laughs> Go watch All right. Video. Yeah, watch uh, Dave's video. Let's see if I still have it here. Yes. There's the link for it again. And... Uh, on his little under fifty dollar um, camp tent stove. Yep. It's not an actual military camp tent stove, but it's a replica of what they used to use in you know Vietnam and crap like that. So, um, but for fifty bucks shipped, you can't beat it. Well, yeah. You probably can if you build it yourself, but if you don't have the way to build it, which I don't, uh, fifty bucks was. Yeah. I forgot, uh, uh, Dave. Did that used to have an oil burner with it too, or not? No. Okay. All right. And one of the things we're going to be talking about Friday, we're going to talk about other channels out here that have good stuff for you to do. Uh, you know, some of the ones we're going to be talking about here is going to be Corsair Trainers, Old School Prepper, Palmetto Prepared, and uh, Manifestations of Imagination. Um, just to pe peek on one. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit, maybe talk about some of, the, some of the things you can do as a family, like cooking bread and other things. Anthony, yes. And uh, some other cool stuff. So, yeah, um, Friday's going to be a, a kind of a hodgepodge um, uh, grab bag for the first day of uh, 2021. And, uh, oh, uh, CJ at Shit Happens just stepped in. Hey, CJ. Uh, Liberty Gardens just came in. Oh, we're just wrapping it up, guys. Sorry, we're wrapping it up. Yeah. And, of course, uh, Uncle Al has his uh, new uh, channel, uh, 
there how, how to get to his channel. So his he, yeah. uh, customized uh, URL there. So, um, yeah. So also, guys, on Friday, if you have there's a particular video from another channel that is something really cool, be ready to share. I shared the, the link to to us here, and um, we'll, we'll you know we can uh, get that out to everybody because basically I want everybody to be, remain sound in body and in mind and in heart this winter. All righty, so everyone, stay happy, stay safe, stay, stay prepared. And we will see you Friday.